Welcome back to the Bluegrass on this super hot July day. And uh, we got a little treat for you. We've got a bunch of labs. So we're gonna go up here to the Small Challenges course and uh, we're gonna do our normal vocab work and we're gonna do some uh, uh, physical skills work and we're gonna do some kayak introduction and some swimming introduction. Then we're gonna go out back and show you what we do with the lab puppies uh, once we get done teaching lessons. And then uh, maybe uh, this afternoon we'll go do some kayaking. So it's gonna be a, a, a loaded, fun, action-packed video. Uh, so let's go up here and see what's going on. Uh, now, on the way, what you'll notice is I have a uh, bunch of dogs, right? So I have some uh, Labradors here ranging from, uh, I've got a chocolate one, I've got a couple of blacks, I've got multiple yellows. And uh, now with the yellow dogs, you'll see some of them, you know, look white or they look uh, cream colored. And, and although people like to make those distinctions, really there's only three colors of labs. You got black ones, you have brown ones, uh, chocolate ones, and you have yellow ones. Okay, now that yellow has a wide range of, 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 of pigmentation, right? So you'll see dogs ranging from like Max, what some people refer to as like a cream colored dog, to, uh, and River, to Blue, who's just, all, just about, you know, white. I mean, it almost has a, has a Samoyed colored uh, uh, coat. So that's pretty neat. Charlie, come on, Charlie. Now, Charlie, he's, he's a black dog. Now, another thing you'll notice with these dogs as we're walking up here. Oh, here's two, these two dogs. That one, you know, kind of looks red. This one is a deep, dark uh, yellow, okay? Still yellow labs, but kind of what you're gonna start to notice once Malone, who's just got here yesterday, and Ruby, who's been here a few weeks, what you're gonna start to notice as you look at them is they're built differently. Now, so not only can, are these dogs, you know, yellow labs, but this is what people refer to as an American uh, lab, and these are what people have a tendency to refer to as English labs, which always cracks me up. You know, people will call me or email me, and they'll be like, hey, Stoney, I got a, <laughs> I have an English cream lab, and I'll be like, okay, where's it from? And they're like, Columbus. <laughs> And I'm like, oh, okay, all right, whatever. <laughs> so you can call them whatever you want. Uh, pretty much all the labs we see are Americans, and that's why we like them so much. <laughs> but, uh, but the basic distinction is that these dogs, these longer, rangier dogs, like uh, Ruby, like my dog, okay, like Charlie, uh, these dogs are bred more on the hunting lines, okay, and these dogs here are bred more on the show lines where they take them and, you know, they make them stand pretty and, and people come by and, and uh, give them treats and give them ribbons and stuff like that, okay. So now what kind of goes along with that, since you have a different purpose for the dogs, is these uh, American bred labs, these hunting bred labs like Charlie and like Ruby, uh, they're generally a little bit more athletic and uh, they have a, a higher energy output level, they have higher endurance, and they have a quicker recharge rate. So in other words, they're generally, not always, but generally better at the motion exercises, okay? And then your small blocky dogs like, uh, like, uh, like River, or let me get him this dog sideways so you can see. Hey, come here, Max. Like, see Max, Max, English cream, Okay. Now, these three really light colored dogs, right, these English labs, uh, they're pretty chill. Like, so in the morning, after we do just a little bit of exercise with them, uh, they kind of just lay around and they're great, okay? These American bred dogs, those are the dogs that are looking at us all the time. Like, hey, Stone, are you getting a kayak out? Are you getting a four-wheeler out? Are we going out back? Are you getting the dummy launcher out? So the kind of the basic breakdown, and I know you've heard me say this before, but like nothing changes in the dog business. So the basic breakdown is the dogs that are really good at the movement exercises, have a little bit more trouble with the being still and having good manners uh, part of life. And then the dogs that are really good at being still and having good manners have a little bit more trouble with the, uh, you know, exercise or physically and mentally uh, demanding activities part of life. Come on, dogs. So we'll walk up here and uh, I'll just walk, work them all and uh, kind of you can see the differences for yourself. And then we can talk about like... Uh, or, or that you can think about, like, you know, what type of dog might suit you the best. Well, then we got a couple more kinds of dogs we'll throw in, just because you might want to look at them. We got a Brittany. We got a Roddy Doodle. That's pretty interesting. Hadn't seen them very often. We have a Malinois. Ranger, come on! Oh. And uh, so this Malinois, he's pretty interesting. He's been here for a little while now, okay? All right, so go up here and let somebody in, and we'll get to work. All right, that's my friend Sandy. She's up from uh, Windrock in Tennessee. Ain't that where you're from, Sandy? Windrock? Oliver Springs. Oliver Springs, which is close to Windrock where everybody goes ATV riding. So, listen, if you're in Oliver Springs, stop in to see my friend Sandy. She's super friendly. She'll probably fix you some fried chicken and everything. <laughs> Won't you, Sandy? 
<laughs> All right, so uh, we're going to work some dogs here, and Sandy's going to follow along because uh, she's up here working with her dog. Uh, now, what we're going to do is we're going to work on our normal small challenges course. Then we're going to come over here, and we're going to jump in the pool, and we're going to get in a kayak. And I'm going to use all of these things to kind of show you some basic differences between these dogs. So, uh, Charlie, come here, Charlie. Remember I was telling you about the American Labs, right, the hunting bred dogs? Come on. <laughs> That's <laughs> That, that's how hard it is to train those guys, right? I just, I say, hey, Charlie, and I point at something and he goes and either fetches it or jumps in it or swims it or whatever, okay? So that's what it's like with Charlie. But now, see what this dog's doing? See what River's doing where he's just being still? Like, <laughs> River's good at being still. Charlie's good at jumping in the pool. So it's a trade-off, guys. It's, I mean, it's a real big trade-off. They are labs, but I want you to understand that there's a difference in types of labs, difference in bloodlines, and then there's a difference in individuals, of course. Right. Okay, well, while Charlie's swimming, let's take one of these other dogs. We'll take Max, this English cream, and uh, we'll walk him. Now, the one thing you can count on with these English bred dogs is that they really like to eat. All these little chubbies, I call them chubbies, <laughs> because when they're little, they're like little short, squatty dogs with giant heads, and that's pretty cool. But you can really take advantage of the fact that they like to eat, okay? Uh, and so if I, ask, uh, if I ask Max to come out here and do some work, uh, as long as I've got a little treat in it for him, hey, he's cool. And a lot of times, a lot of times people worry about that. You know, they're like, "Oh, hey, Stony, you know, I feel like my lab will only mind me when I have my treats." Okay, don't worry about it because you just keep working, and then as you keep working, right, then gradually they get in the habit of minding. And what I always say is that habit is the strongest motivator. Okay, so you just use your treats till you don't have to use them anymore, and it goes away pretty quick. All right, Sandy, come on and follow me. You do what I do. Now you guys are going to see Sandy kind of uh, come in and out of the screen. And she has a, uh, a Springer Spaniel, right? Would you call that an English Springer Spaniel? See, people are obsessed with this English stuff. Now, we fought a whole revolution to get away from the English. <laughs> people want English labs, want English Springers. I don't know. Maybe they want a, maybe they want a queen. Come on. Or a king. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to walk around here. Now, you see once these dogs, <laughs> all three of these, uh, these, uh, these, these English bred dogs, you see how once they realized it was treat time, how they're kind of all mobbing me, right? That's how much they like to eat. So I'm going to have to push them out of the way for a minute. Oh, now the neat thing with them though, is that like when I bring these treats out, they all get them a little bit of energy and they all are pretty good about working, but it doesn't take very much work to uh, regulate their energy output for the day. So in other words, a couple of trips around this course with Max uh, or with Blue or with River, wait, easy, hey, and they're done. So the reason people like these English bred dogs, number one is because of how they look. Let's take them over here on the table, Eli, and let's show them like what I'm talking about when I'm talking about how they look and how blocky they are. Now Sandy, you could just keep working there in the background. So I'm putting them up on this table, go over this way, Eli. Look at Isabella. She's wanting to show how pretty she is. All right, we know you're pretty. Okay, now you see how this dog's kind of square? Do you see what I'm saying? You know, deep chested, broad chested, short stubby legs a little bit. Okay, now we'll switch over here. Oh my gosh. Now, so that's what people would call an English cream. Now here is a what people would call a white lab. But remember, there's only three kinds of lab. There's black, uh, chocolate, and yellow. And so this just means, when they call them white, they just mean they don't have much in the way of pigment. But you see that? Look. Now, look at them front ways. See, he's kind of got that big square head, broad chest, big old feet. That's what people like. And you'll hear them. They'll come down here and they'll be like, oh, that dog. Oh, look at his head. Look at his face. Uh, river, same thing, kind of in between. Blue and uh, Max, more of this, you know, kind of cream color. Good, very nice. But see, as a similar, see, look how wide his tail is at the base, kind of a short, you know, wide tail. Uh, again, kind of big square head, real puppyish looking, uh, and also very responsive to food work. Uh, I break out a little bit of food. I show River, hey, I got some food, and even at 13 weeks old, he's going to come over here and put a bunch of effort out, at least in the beginning stages of our training session. Now, with these little dogs, they get real excited for food, but I can't get a lot of repetitions in with them because part of being real blocky, uh, you know, that, that uh, the exercise is hard for them and the, the heat dissipation is also hard for them. 
you know, short, stocky dogs have a lot harder time dealing with the heat than long, skinny, rangy dogs. And so since this dog is, is new, you'll notice I'm kind of walking the course backwards with him, trying to make sure that he gets everything right. Good, a lot of help. Oh, now this is the kind of thing, like if you'll go back and watch my videos with uh, Mr. No Name or any of those American bred dogs, the hunting bred dogs, I didn't have to be quite this, uh, didn't have to be quite this uh, mother hennish with them because their natural, you know, balance and athleticism is a little better. Good. I baby these uh, English bred dogs a little bit, you know. Dun, 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 dun. And that's the key to dog training, guys. That's why I always say art, dog training is an art because somebody will tell you, oh, this is how you train a lab or this is how you train a Malinois. Well, as you're going to see as this video progresses, there's a lot of difference between training this lab, right, which is a yellow lab, and training either of these labs, which are both also yellow labs. But i got to be very careful here. Make them wait their turn. Very nice. Come on, come on. Very good. Very good. Now you see there's some other kind of dogs kind of weaseling their way in here. Oh my gosh. And see that right there? That's what I'm talking about. This right here is going to be a constant for River and Blue and Max. It is like, we do the course and the level of oversight that it takes to make sure that they don't uh, kind of, you know, get off balance or slide off an obstacle, it's probably, what do you think, Eli, three, four times as much as with the American dogs. Oh, yeah. The American dogs just kind of come out here, master it. Now, look at Blue. He's, he's doing a good job. Oh, but look, see, watch. Watch, watch him do this. Just kind of a little clumsy. It's Roddy Doodle. He's a little clumsy. He's from New Jersey, though, so we expect that. All right, get back up here. <laughs> oh, my gosh, you're so clumsy. Come on, come on. Very nice. Oh, now be careful here. So, again, I'm going to have to be real careful. Now, look, coming right up behind him is Ruby, right? And uh, she's sure-footed as a mountain goat. And you see that like right there, you see? Just, and this will be a constant with us, guys. Now it'll get better over the course of a few weeks. Uh, this dog's only been here, I think, for four days now. So he's just now kind of getting the hang of things. Good. But every time we come up on an obstacle, you gotta be very careful, because that's the kind of stuff that's gonna happen. So we'll kind of move that one out of the way. Oh, you're a very good dog. Oh, come on, very nice. Very nice. Okay, now we'll let this one off work. Come here, Ruby. Oh, so we'll take Ruby. Oh my gosh, Ruby, come on. Now, you'll see another dog like Ruby roaming around here. I don't know where he went, uh, but his name's Malone, and he just got here uh, yesterday. So he's kind of coming in and out of the frame, and uh, he's, he's been overexerting himself a little bit, so he might be high, laid up in the shade. Good. Good. Now, <laughs> this is another thing with English labs. Do you see how they have no respect? <laughs> just watch. They kind of just kind of bully their way through things, which is kind of funny and kind of neat, but uh, it can be a little bit aggravating because they have the same attitude towards stairs and going in and out of doors. It's kind of like they're just so good looking that they know that uh, they don't have to be exceptionally polite. Now, I know that's not what's really going on, but that's what it seems like sometimes. Very nice. But look at Ruby. Very easy. <laughs> Ruby's been in this program for, you know, like I said, less than a month. And she's already past the point of uh, needing uh, much in the way of rewards or needing much in the way of petting and praise. Like she just signs up. She does the work. You know, we might give her a treat or two here on the pause points. <clears throat> but for the most part, she just kind of, you know, gets up and goes with the routine, you know, because we've established a habit with her. And <clears throat> what you're going to notice, guys, is out of all the dogs that are bred to do physically and mentally demanding tasks with a handler, you know, or in other words, they're bred specifically to work in conjunction with a handler to accomplish a, a, a complex task, like a herding dog or like a retriever that actually does hunting or hunting dog sports, retrieving sports, then like their pattern cognizance is just, 
it's 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 off the charts as compared to the other dogs. It's not necessarily that their their raw intellect is better. They're probably not any smarter. It's just that they recognize patterns more quickly, and uh, they've been bred to be more sensitive to handler direction. So when you have this kind of dog, you have to be a little bit less good of a dog trainer because the dog is so good at understanding what you would like and doing the things that you would like for it to do that there's not much work required to cause that handler dog synergy. Okay, so let's take a look at a dog that's bred similar to Ruby, uh, but maybe from a little bit more competitive bloodline. Charlie, oh my gosh. So this is Charlie. Now Charlie, we'll let Sandy go ahead. Now Charlie is, uh, he's the most, well, I don't know that he's the most athletic dog here and the most hard worker here, but man, he's close. What, what do you think, Eli? I mean, we've got a couple of Malinois here uh, that are, that are, you know, that are something else. But, like, uh, I don't know if that, I don't know that they're any more athletic than Charlie. Yep. Good. The great thing about Charlie is that not only is he athletic, but, like, his endurance, his ability to put forth a high level of effort over a long period of time and it's just his overall attitude towards accomplishing goals it's it's incredible you know wait now he can be a little aggravating on the you know the manners and on the being still part but as far as hey let's get in the river let's get in the pool let's get in the kayak let's get in the boat let's do some retrieving you know listen his retrieving is great now, his being patient while he's retrieving, well, is that great? No. <laughs> but we'll get there because what we're going to convince him of eventually is that if he'll just be calm, attentive, and polite, then he'll get to, be able, then he'll get to do more retrieving, which is all he really wants. Wait. But we'll take him over here on this table, and we'll take a look at him, and you can kind of see you know, the difference uh, in how he's built versus these English bred dogs. So let's get him over here. Move out that way there, Eli. And see, he just he's a little bit different. You see, he's kind of got a, you know, one of the things they like about them English dogs, they like for them to have a real wide tail, you know. Uh, they like for him to be very symmetrical. Now, Charlie doesn't have a lot of length of leg to him. Uh, his head, oh, turn around here, Charlie. Let's see. Let's see, oh, let's see if I can get his head up here. His, his head's a, a little bit more narrow. His ear set is a little different, you know, okay? And this is kind of typical. Now, this is a Roddy Poo, and I cannot tell you, or a Roddy Doodle, whatever you want to call it, and I can't tell you anything about them because that's the first one I've seen. But all in all, Bear seems to be a pretty nice dog. He's wanting to get walked, so we'll walk him while we finish talking about these dogs and we'll get in the pool. Now, come on, Bear. All right, so now look. Here, I let Charlie off of work. And what does Charlie do? He comes right back and wants to get back in this pattern. And the thing to notice, this, this probably won't be obvious the first time you watch the video, but if you watch the video a couple of times, one of the things you'll notice with Charlie is how springy he is. There is a, like when you touch these dogs, I know like when you're watching videos, you can see it, you can see like a conformational difference between the different kinds of dogs. But what's hard to understand is what it's like to touch different dogs. When you touch uh, Max, come here, Max. Oh, when you when you touch Max, right? Max is an old squishy dog. He's just a squishy lover, like you cuddle up with at night. You know what I'm saying? All right, let's see if we can get Charlie up here. Charlie. Oh, get up here, Charlie. Listen, when you touch Charlie, what's he remind you of, Eli? A pit bull. A pit bull, yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. So, we thought he was a pit bull mix there for a little while. But he's like he's hard as a rock, isn't he, Eli? I mean, he's a tough dog. He's very hard. He just runs through brambles and briars and stuff, doesn't even notice. Right? Squishy. Look at that. Squish, 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 squish. But, but lovable and cuddly. Hard as a rock. Okay? Uh, now, here's my dog. He's like, what about me, Dad? I'm pretty buff, too. All right, you guys go on. I'm hurting Mr. No Name's name, no feelings, because, oh my gosh, because I didn't say he was buff. He's pretty buff. All right, come on. Get out of the way there, Max. But look at this dang uh, uh, Roddy Doodle. This is my buddy from uh, New Jersey, Mario. Mario is a longshoreman, only, only longshoreman I've ever known in my whole life, but he's a cool dude. And uh, so he calls me and he says, hey, Stoney, I got a Roddy Doodle from some Amish people. What do you think? And I had to say, well, <laughs> listen, Mario, I am not an expert 
on uh, Roddy Doodles or Amish folks. But you bring him down and uh, we'll see what we can do. Does he seem like a nice dog? And uh, Mario said, yeah, he seems like a real nice dog. Now Sandy's over here doing her cursory physical exam because she's a stellar student, because she's a teacher, so she understands the value following directions, don't you Sandy? I do. Very nice. Now look at this guy. That's a good looking dog. What do you think, Eli? Yeah, he's a real good dog. Pretty sharp. Pretty sharp. That's a pretty pattern cognizant dog. Uh, got a real uh, kind of easy to, easy to manage personality and temperament. Uh, now this is Ranger. You guys have seen Ranger in some videos. He's a Malinois. Oh, he's about maybe, I don't know, eight weeks old, or 18 weeks old now, 20 weeks old, something like that. You go on, Biggie, chubby. All right, so now, again, getting back to dogs that are bred to do a, you know, a complex job in conjunction with the handler. These Malinois, when you go to training them, I mean, obviously, there's different dogs than labs, right? And they are way different in terms of, uh, you know, kind of fixing your, your, your training schedule as it relates to total volume over the course of a week than, than the English labs. But pretty similar, to be honest with you, with how you approach uh, setting your uh, session and repetition volume up for the American labs. I mean, other than the fact that these are herding dogs, like their pattern cognizance, their ability to do work, their overarching uh, 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 physical prowess as it relates to physical impediments, uh, it's pretty similar to American labs, you know. So people are always surprised at that. The, the people come down and I let them walk all these different dogs and a lot of them comment on how similar like it is trying to get the uh, hunting bred labs to do things and the uh, Malinois. Very nice. We'll bring over here and let you look at this dog. Now again, Malinois, they're kind of like labs in that you have a, a broad ranging kind of confirmation. You know, you have a bunch of different colors and stuff. This is kind of pretty typical what you'll see. You know, nice, nice little square body, pretty uh, symmetrical, uh, erect ears, uh, black mask, and relatively fawn. He's got a lot of black in him. You know, my favorites are, are straight fawn down here with a black mask. Oh, <clears throat> look at that. He's a pretty good, look, pretty good looking dog though, no? Very nice. All right, now what else do we have? We got a Brittany. All right, so let's take a look at Tuck. The very interesting little dog. Oh, and we'll let Sandy go and then we'll follow right along. Now, so Sandy has an uh, English uh, Springer and this is a Brittany. It's a pretty cool looking little dog. Now, remember we were talking about these bloodlines with the labs, like you have the, you know, the American bred and the English bred and kind of one's a little bit more active. Uh, you have the same thing that goes on, goes on uh, with these little dogs like this Brittany or that uh, English Springer there. You have different bloodlines and some of those bloodlines are geared uh, towards hunting and some of those bloodlines are geared towards, uh, you know, dogs that uh, uh, are, are show dogs, basically, right? Maybe just family pets even. <clears throat> so, guy that had this dog, that has this dog now, he used to have a Brittany, but that was from a, a little bit more of a high running hunting line. But the guy lives in town in Lexington, and so this time he thought he was gonna, you know, is it like he didn't really need a dog that had a super high energy output, super high endurance, and a quick recharge rate. So he went and talked to some breeders, and he got a dog that was kind of uh, more graduated in all those things. And so Tuck, uh, he's got a pretty good energy level. He's got pretty good endurance, but when he sacks out, he sacks out, you know. So we bring him out here and we work him in the morning. And uh, by about 10 o'clock in the morning, he's, he's ready to get in the shade and just hang out and be still. So he still is plenty, you know, he's, he's plenty good to take out back and take on a puppy sized adventure, you know. But like he kind of hangs out with these, uh, with these English labs and uh, he, he <laughs> <laughs> he, he looks forward to nap time. Let's just put it that way. Uh, so let's bring him over here and take a look at him. Very nice. Get up here so they can see you, dude. Very nice. Show him his face, Eli. Good. Now look at all those dogs. That's some fine animals right there. Good dogs. Oh my gosh. Very nice. Oh. What else do we have? Okay, now this is Malone. Uh, back up and show him Malone, Eli. Now Malone is very similar to Ruby, but Malone just got here yesterday, so we're not really doing anything with him. That's, you know, he's just kind of coming in and out. All right, so now let's do some other fun stuff. <clears throat> uh, so we've been filling up our pool this morning. 
Oh, and it's cold too. So let me get these dogs in here. Now, so this is how hard it is to get a. Uh, oh, give me my socks, dude. This is how hard it is to get a hunting bread dog in there. Hey, Charlie, come on. <laughs> there we go. Okay, done. Send me my check, right? Uh, so let's get one of these English bread dogs in there. Oh, you want to get in there, Mr. No Name? Come on. Come on, you can get in there. Uh, Mr. No Name's not quite as springy as Charlie. See, Charlie's just in and out, in and out, in and out. So let's take Max. <laughs> well, how about this first? Max, up. <laughs> Max, jump. Okay. Charlie. Oh, Charlie. Come on up. Now, hey, Max. Up. And so, Max, this is about what I get out of this English dog, right? So, let's just pick him up. Oh, my gosh. And put him in there. See what he does. <laughs> you see? So, it's just a lot more work. It's just a lot more work with these dogs as it relates to doing the stuff that you would think a lab would be naturally good at. And so you gotta kind of be willing to, you gotta be kind of willing to, uh, like, be more patient. So let's get, uh, let's see who we got. Hey, uh, River, <laughs> River, come on, buddy. All right, so let's try the same thing with uh, River. We'll go ahead and put a leash on River, so we can uh, get him in this pool, give him a little help. Oh Lord, that's cold. All right. So we're just going to put him in here, kind of let him learn to swim. Now when you first go to let them, watch that noise. When you first start letting them go to swim, like you'll notice like sometimes they're, they don't know how to get their buoyancy right. So you can just kind of reach under here, kind of hold them up a little bit. Show them, Eli. Just kind of let him understand how his back end, uh, hey, listen, <laughs> show offs. Go on, go on, get in the back. Oh, let me turn him around. So, I'll just kind of teach him, let him understand how his back end and his front end works together. But this is the difference, guys, between the American dogs, the hunting dogs, and the English bred dogs. This dog here, if I can get this one out of the way, if you'll notice, what he's doing is he'll get here and he'll just stop moving his legs. He'll just be like, oh, so, Stoney, you're going to hold me there and let me lounge? <laughs> oh, let's try Blue. Hey, Blue! Come here, Blue. And again, where's Blue? He's laid up under the shade. Uh, but if Blue thinks there's a treat in it, then he'll come over here and check it out and see what's going on. So, give him a treat. Oh, come here, Blue. Ah, same thing. Get up here where you can see him, Eli. Now, we're just going to drop him in the water at first and see what he does. That's actually pretty good. He's showing good natural buoyancy. And he's moving his legs together in concert. This is a common thing you'll see. When they get a little upset, they're, they'll start beating the water with their front end and their rear end will kind of start to sink. They've got to learn to relax. This is the real key with swimming, guys. Everybody asks me about, you know, getting your, teaching your dog to swim. Really, it's just a matter of them getting enough experience to understand that they have to relax because the dog's the way it's built has a natural buoyancy. So we'll get them in there, just kind of moving back and forth. And having these other dogs in here helps a little bit. Good boy. Very nice. Oh, nope, not getting out yet. Oh. And what I'm trying to do is I'm going to try to get just a second where he's, you know, doing some good swimming. Then I'll let him out. I don't want him to think he got out because he panicked. Good. I'll give him a little help. Little help. Now he's doing pretty well. Okay. So once he's doing well, we always want to end our sessions on a high note. He's doing well, so we let him out. Oh my gosh, Charlie. So look at Max. He said he might want to come back in here and try again. Oh, come here, Max. Now being in here with him makes it a lot easier. All right, now this is pretty typical. So guys, I, I get this email a lot. People have got an English lab. And... Uh, and they're having a little bit of trouble with the pool, getting them in the pool, or they're down at the beach or whatever. Don't overthink it, guys. It's really just a matter of getting them in the water and uh, letting them acclimate. Once they start to acclimate, once they start to relax, then they'll just start floating. And then when they're floating, that the natural tendency to move their legs in uh, concert will give them uh, locomotion in the water. 
Good. So we're just going to make him go in a circle, kind of like a horse in a round pin. Whoa. Now see, this right here is where you got to be careful because you don't want to let them out when they're panicking. You want to help them calm down. And they don't have to be perfect swimmers on the first day, but you want them to calm down, good boy, and relax. And then once they get relaxed, then you help them out of the water. Very nice. You see that right there, that panic? I don't want that panic. That's not what I want. I want relaxed. Just chill, dude. Good boy. This dog can actually pretty much stand up in this water if he chooses to. But see, now I've got him calmed down and relaxed. Good. So being calm and uh, polite and attentive, even in the water, is going to lead to what he wants, which is, oh, now getting out of the water. Perfect. Perfect. Ugh. Oh, and look, Blue's decided he might want to get back in. Blue, do you want to do it one more time? Oh my gosh. You can do it one more time. Oh, so Blue decided he might want to get in there one more time. Good, I'll get in there with him. He don't want to be in there by himself. Come on, Charlie. Now, this is you'll see this, guys. This is, they're just like children where sometimes they, they think they want to do something. Then they get a little nervous and then they think they want to quit. Just don't let them quit, you know, till they have, have made some progress. So I'll get this dog in here. All he's got to do is make some progress towards being calm and quiet, locomoting. Good boy. Very nice. Look, I'm getting some strokes there. Very nice. Oh, no, turn around this way. Oh, uh, you can put your one off, Charlie. Good. Now, starting to calm down. Maybe give him a little support right here in the back end. Let those front feet and back feet start working together. And it's calm, polite. Seems relatively attentive for the situation. Good, okay, now let him out. Very nice. And then what you'll see is as they get more comfortable, uh, then they just come over here and start hopping in and out of the water. Okay, now the next thing that we do this morning, or next time, the next thing that we're doing this morning is we gotta do a little kayaking work. So we're gonna come over here and put the dogs on the kayak. Now, a simple thing that I do is I just come over here and I throw some treats up here, you know, and they'll hop up here and start trying to climb on there. And there's no reason to overthink this part. I got all the time in the world and uh, I can just hit this three or four times a day till the dogs kind of start realizing that uh, getting up here on this kayak is a good idea. Oh, what do you think, Ruby? Very nice. What do you think, Blue? Very nice. Oh, and what do you think, River? Now, River's from Pittsburgh. Lives on a lake up there around Pittsburgh somewhere. Gonna be doing a lot of kayaking in the future. Very nice. Charlie is from Wisconsin or Minnesota or somewhere. A lot of lakes up there. Good. So we seem to attract a big kayaking crowd. Good. And we live in Kentucky. And there's more navigable miles of uh, waterways in Kentucky, I think, than any state other than Alaska. Now, that might not be true, but uh, that's just what they tell us here. Good. Okay. Now, this is pretty cool. But I'll show you something fun that you'll run up onto with uh, some dogs. Let me get this water hose out over here. <clears throat> Guys, back when I used to be real big into Malinois, this is about all I cared about. I'd never seen a Malinois that would chase a water hose that I didn't like. So, like, I would do this with puppies. Somebody would say, hey, Stoney, you want a puppy? I'd say, hey, get a water hose out. If it'll chase a water hose, I'll take it. And I bet I've bought a dozen like that, you know. But so what's pretty neat, look at this. Um, Max loves chasing this water hose. And so... We got to come out here every day because this kayak gets real hot sitting in the sun. And so Eli started playing with Max the other day and he would guide him around, watch, and then he would use it like a laser pointer. <laughs> and Max would run up here and start jumping in the uh, kayak. So he'd take him around this way and then put his... <laughs> uh. Oh, River got knocked out of the kayak. Good. Now, how neat is that? <laughs> Get a couple angles of that, Eli. 
So we got him over there and he's just kind of chasing and running. I'm gonna bring it up here. <laughs> yeah, we do it this way. <laughs> now how fun is that listen guys when you're a dog trainer you have to be creative with how you entertain yourself and sometimes the dogs are pretty cooperative and so this has been the highlight of my week <laughs> it's just playing uh like uh with the water hose with max like he's a remote control car Okay, so Breck's here. He's visiting. Uh, Breck's owner, Gene, is over in Spain or something. Come on, Breck. And uh, Breck is about a year old chocolate lab. Come on, buddy. Get back, Charlie. Good boy. Now, you guys notice Charlie is still getting in the middle of everything. You know, now Charlie has been going since uh, 6 o'clock this morning and has never stopped. And uh, we have worked through dogs, cycled through dogs, put dogs in the pool. <laughs> We've done a whole bunch of stuff, and he is still going 100%. All right, Max still going pretty good. River's having a good time. Wait, we'll give Breck a treat. Now Breck's at an age where he doesn't really have to have treats, but we give them to him anyway. Oh, very nice, give me that leash back. Up. Good boy. Wait, easy. Uh, now, like with a dog like Breck, you know, Breck has a good education. Uh, he's at an age right now where kind of testosterone is coursing through his body, so he can be, uh, you know, a little bit impulsive. He'll start off with a puppy, and they'll kind of be impulsive, and they'll have a short attention span. And then you'll get them to where they come and be still and have good manners, and they're calm, attentive, and polite in social situations. Uh, and they, they get better and better and better, and then they hit puberty, and they have kind of a temporary downturn, you know, stay. And uh, that's what Breck's going through right now. So we got to do a little bit of extra work with him to keep him on point. You know, he's a pretty good looking dog. I'll stand him up so you guys can kind of see what he looks like. Now again, you know, Breck is kind of that the English style, kind of square, blocky, big old head. Very nice. And uh, you know, he, and, and, and fooling with Breck, it follows uh, the same as fooling with those three little yellow lab puppies. They come out, they've got a lot of energy uh, output, but their endurance isn't very high. So they kind of come out and they run around, they do a lot of stuff, and then they go lay down under the shade and they're pretty good for the hours, you know. So that's why people like them, is they, they look good and they're fun to play with for a little while, but then they kind of chill out and, and just relax and lay around at your feet. Uh, all right, guys, now this is Larry. Larry is a silver lab. So let me take him over here, and we'll show you what a silver lab looks like. Now, uh, Larry just got here, and Larry is way behind on his uh, education and his socialization. So I'm going to have to pick, pick him up and put him on this table and try to keep him from jumping off. But we'll kind of give you a side view. All right. So this is kind of what they look like from the side. You want a treat there, Larry? Good. Very nice. And then this is kind of what they look like from the front. Now, for those of you out there are wondering, you're thinking, well, hey, Stoney, that looks a lot like a Weimaraner. Uh, yeah, I'd say you're right. <laughs> as far as I can tell, a Silver Lab is a Weimaraner cross, you know. Uh, and so a lot of people in the lab world, they're not real, they're not real uh, you know, they don't like that very much. But uh, these guys are okay. Uh, but man, if you're used to, like if you're used to working with an American bred uh, field lab, or if you're used to working with uh, an English bred, a bench bred dog, these dogs, they, they take a little extra patience because they're very impulsive like a wine runner. They have a tendency towards barking a lot and uh, like they have a very unforgiving temperament. So a Labrador is known for having a very, very forgiving temperament. That's why you see so many people like that are successful training them because you don't have to be the best trainer to have a lab that mines pretty good. Okay, if you have a Weimaraner that mines pretty good, then you're probably a pretty good dog trainer. If you have a lab that mines good, you may or may not be a good dog trainer. Okay, so these, uh, these silver labs, you gotta kinda have your, your game on point if you wanna raise one of these successfully without a lot of labor. Okay, uh, now we don't have problem getting them to come, be still have good manners, and, and be calm, attentive, and polite in social situations, but the total labor input required to get them to that point is much higher. Wouldn't you say, Eli? Oh yeah. 
Like, so with Larry, you got, and I'll point this out in a lot of these videos. Brett, get out of the way. So with Larry, the amount of time that it takes us to work with a dog like Larry every day is a multiple of what it takes to work with these uh, uh, English style labs. And which is uh, also, that's another multiple as, as it, what it's like to have to train these uh, American bread labs, okay? But uh, so Larry's doing okay. Now he just got here, so we have to be very patient with him. Come on, Larry, get out of that tub. And you see, like, look, show him, Eli, look, look at him. This is pretty typical for this silver lab. Get down there low where so you can see his face. I want him to see his face when I try to make him come out of there. Come on, Larry. <laughs> hey, Larry, come on. He's like, uh, I don't think so. <laughs> and so, like, uh, you know, when, when, when you see these on the schedule to come in, then uh, you know you got some work to, you know you got some work to put in. Come on, Larry. Now I'll show you guys kind of what it's like to try to get him to walk on the leash. Now, I don't want to get into a battle with uh, Larry because like I said, these silver labs, they don't have quite as forgiving a temperament uh, as these other dogs. Uh, the American bred dogs and the English bred dogs, like if you kind of have to make them do something, they're pretty forgiving about it. This dog here, if I mess up in my training and I get uh, short, short tempered with him, if I get short in my patience or like if I try to make a, his ability to navigate or negotiate a physical impediment, but if, if, if I try to rush that, then I'll set myself back and he'll just shut down and won't work for the whole rest of the day. So remember how I was working River a minute ago, uh, uh, even though this dog's way older, I'm gonna have to come over here and approach, you know, getting up here on this obstacle the same way I approach it with River, who's only 13 weeks old. So I'm gonna be real heavy on my food, food work. And uh, you know, I might like get his collar a little bit, just kind of help him and guide him a little bit. But to be very patient, and I expect that. It's another thing about these silver labs. Their proprioception, naturally, as compared to say the English labs, their body awareness, it, it's, it's, it's not comparable, you know. So like, don't get mad at them if, if they're having trouble with something because they just kinda, they just kinda have trouble with things. You know, all right, so Larry's making a good effort. Oh, and that's really all I need. Good effort. Come on, Larry. Get back, Max. Come on, Larry. Oh, so what I want to try to do is I want to try to put in just enough work to get him started down this board. Come on. Very nice. And see, I'm getting two or three steps. I feel like I can get a few more steps if I can just position my body correctly. Hey, listen. Go on. Go on, come on, hey. Oh, come back here, Larry. Ah, this is where you have to be super patient, guys. So we get Larry up here. Go on. Good. Now, I'm gonna keep my hand low using this targeting technique. Keep it low, keep his head down so I can control his foot placement. Boom, there, I got him off. So that was a successful repetition from my perspective. I'm gonna back up over this jump. Show him that I can do the jump, call him to me. Say, I appreciate it. I'm gonna do the same thing with these steps. Good. Come on, buddy. Keeping his head down low. Been very nice. Now you see he's there still, even when I kept his head down low, I still had a problem with the foot placement. Now I'm gonna skip this one because it's a little bit too high off the ground and I don't wanna have to try to catch him. I don't want anything to go wrong. Now we're gonna come over to the barrels. And uh, believe it or not, these barrels can be hard for some of these dogs. So I'm gonna keep his head low, let him follow. Heads low, let him follow, and say I appreciate it. Now I didn't like the fact that he got in a big hurry right there on the very end. So I'm gonna try to come back and keep his head low. Good, keep his head low and stop right here. And you see right there where it, like, he has no awareness of where his feet are. And what, what I wanna do is I wanna try to stop this repetition right here, right, where all four feet are uh, on those blocks. And hopefully that's a realistic goal. Sometimes, come on Larry, sometimes you set goals that just aren't 100% realistic. Oh, that's the nature of being in the dog business though, it's an art. And you gotta make art when you can. There we go. Very nice. I'm gonna let him stay there for a second. Boom. Now here we'll just go. We'll go around this dog walk. 
because this dog walks a little higher off the ground. It's a little longer than the first one. So until he can master the first one, obviously he can't do the second one. All right. So here, same thing as before. Step over with them. This is pretty easy. Uh, keep his head down low and be liberal with my treats. We'll back up and over. Very nice. And then the last thing I'm gonna try to do is get him up here on the table. And what I'm gonna do following that same strategy is I'm going to get on the table and I'm gonna back up. And what I'll primarily use my leash for here is I'll try just to keep use my leash to not, not to make him get up there, but to keep him from going in that hole there. So I'll keep his head down low and I'll make a little food trail. These other dogs are up here, so it'll kind of help. Oh, and this is where you got to be patient, guys. And this is where you can go south with one of these silver labs. Like if you're trying to get these repetitions and you're almost getting it and you're not, it can be very frustrating. And so then you get frustrated and if you fuss at them, they won't forgive you. If you fuss at them, they'll shut down on you and you won't be able to get any more repetitions that day. But we got Larry up there. We managed not to fuss at him. Good. We'll hold him there so you guys can look at him one more time. Try to get his head up so you get a good idea of what he looks like. Good. I'll show you his face. Talk to him, Eli. Hey, buddy. Very nice. Okay, Larry, you're done. All right, so we're on our way out back to do some uh, retriever training with uh, some of my older dogs and to do a little bit of environmental socialization with these puppies. But I thought I would just kind of stop and uh, throw the dummy for these guys maybe three times just so you could see uh, you know, what it looks like difference-wise in terms of the puppy's overall tendency to want to fetch. So here's River, and he's uh, 12 or 13 weeks old. Yellow lab, but people call him a cream or a white. <laughs> Come on, River. And so you see that he at least ran out there after it pretty good. Come on, River. Oh my gosh, you're such a good dog. Very nice. And so he comes back kind of close with it. Let's see if he'll chase it three times. We're gonna give everybody three chances. That's two. And see, now that's a pretty, that's a pretty good effort there, pretty good drive towards the activity. The fact that he's laying down, that doesn't really bother me. If I'm really working on fetching, what we're going to do is we're going to start in a corner and then um, progress to a hallway and then we'll do it inside in a low distraction environment like the garage and then gradually we expect the dogs to be able to perform with more speed and precision in higher distraction environments. Uh, so right now this is just a test to see how much they like to chase it. I just wanted to show you guys the difference between the different dogs. Come on, come on. Come on, nerd. And of course he's going to chase it but he's not going to want to give it back. Dude, you gotta give that back. You gotta give it back. You gotta give it back. All right, so it's, uh, like I said, about 95. We'll see if he'll chase it three times in a row. River! Hey, River, come here, buddy. Come on, come on. Come on, you can do it, nerd. And you see he's already slowing down in Eli. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> and he's collapsed. <laughs> hey, dude, come here. Come on. Oh, your mom is not going to want me to show this video. Come on. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, just to be honest with you guys, okay? <laughs> look at him. <laughs> oh, does he look like a hard worker? <laughs> oh, or does he just look like a pretty dog? He just looks like a pretty dog. All right, let's get another one. That was some pretty good chasing. <laughs> oh my gosh, what are you doing, Chubby? All right, and so here <laughs> we have Blue, and Blue is full of energy. <laughs> we, we put him up for a little while just so that he had a better chance of uh, <laughs> making his mom happy when we put him on YouTube. Oh my gosh, where's Marty? Oh, what are you going to do with this? What are you going to do with this? All right, what's the odds, Eli? What's the odds? Bring it back, Blue! Oh my gosh, look! Oh my he's a good dog! Oh, he's such a good dog! Oh, he's such a good dog! Oh my God. Couldn't you do it too? We're gonna give you three chances. Look at that. Dang! Oh my gosh, come here! Come here! Oh my gosh! Oh! oh. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna stop there, okay? This is the hardest thing in dog training because, you know, you always want to do one more. Uh, 
but in all honesty, I did not expect Blue to come out here and do any fetching. I thought he would come out here and, and uh, like lay over on his back and maybe eat some grass or whatever. And he went and got it the first time and did pretty well. And then that second time, he went right out there. He grabbed it. He was pretty calm with his bite and he ran right back to me. And now look, he's sitting here being calm and attentive and polite. I can't ask for any more. And every dog trainer knows that you should send, end your sessions on a high note right and uh so i don't want to take a chance on messing up so this guy oh my gosh he just oh he just got himself a steak dinner what do you think eli you think oh, he deserves yeah. a steak oh yeah <laughs> oh you're a good dog now we'll try max max come here buddy oh little max oh you a good dog you a very good dog we're going to give you three tries buddy to show off your fetching and Blue just did a good job. What are you going to do? So we'll tease him a little bit. And then toss. That's one throw. Oh, come here, Max. Oh, my gosh. You're such a pretty dog. You're a pretty dog. And two tosses. Oh, my gosh. You're such a pretty dog. Oh, you're very nice. What do you think, Eli? Should I stop there or should I go for one more? One more. Oh my gosh, you're such a good dog. You are a very good dog. Oh my gosh. Oh, we're definitely raising our prices. We're definitely raising our prices. <laughs> I need a four-wheel drive van. Oh, come on, Tuck. Let's give you a chance. Oh, Brittany's matter too, not just labs. Oh, now, uh, what I would think is going to happen here is this dog's going to like to chase it, but then he's going to want to go do his own thing. So we'll see. Psh, we'll tease him a little bit. Oh, going to tease him. Going to tease him. And then we're going to toss it. Oh, come on back. Come on back. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Why did I know that was going to happen? But Uncle Stoney's too smart for you, dude. I've got a long line on you. You have to bring it back. Oh, <laughs> where are you going? Nope. You can't get away. Oh my gosh. You're a very good dog. But you have to bring it all the way back. I don't work for you, dude. You work for me. Throw it a little farther, and he'll think he can get away a little faster, but he can't because I have him trapped. Come on. Oh, you can come on back over here. Come on. Oh my gosh. Come on, come on. Oh, you're supposed to bring that with you. You're supposed to bring it with you, nerd. You're getting tied up in your long line because you're not bringing it straight back. Nope. No, sir. Oh, no, sir. Oh, you show line, Brittany, ain't you? Oh, you just think you're supposed to be pretty and everybody's supposed to wait on you. Oh, come on. Come on, dude. Give me one rep where you look good. Look at that. That's about what I figured. Oh, but like I said, I'm too smart for him. I got him trapped and we're going to wind him back in here. So we end, oh, on a relatively high note. I mean, I did get my bumper back and he didn't get a chance to run off in the shade, which is what he wanted. You want to try it one more time? There you go. Come on, buddy. Come on. You can do it, Tuck. Come on. Oh, that's a pretty good repetition. I feel like I'm making progress, Eli. So I'm gonna go for five. I know I said I was only going for three. Like, listen, guys out there in YouTube land, I'm making that mistake I tell you guys not to make. I'm always thinking I can just get one better rep. Oh, but sometimes it works out. Come on, come on. Oh, come on, come on. Oh, just a little bit of help from the long line and I got it back. Ah, Oh, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Oh. All right. Well, we went three over our limit, but we ended up at least getting the, the uh, retrieving item back in our hand, even though it took a little bit of long line work. Uh, so that's not bad. It's not bad at all. All right, here's Ranger, and we're going to give him his uh, three repetitions. Oh, my gosh. Oh, now, he's a pretty good dog, so probably what I'm going to do is tease him a little bit and have Eli back up so that I can get a pretty good toss in here. Oh, my gosh, look. Oh, good boy. Oh, my gosh, you're such a good dog. And I'm 
Be back here tease him a little bit. Oh my gosh, you're a very good dog. You're a very good dog. Pretty long toss. That's two. I expect that he'll get all three of these right. Oh my gosh, very nice. Oh, these Malinois like to fetch quite a bit. Oh, come on, buddy. What's hard with these Malinois is you get them to where they'll like fetch when they want to tug, you know, because they get so crazy that you got to kind of try to teach them the difference between just, you know, a fetching item and a tugging item. Oh my gosh, there's his three reps. Oh, I'm going to break a rule. Oh, get one more in. Oh my gosh, very nice. You're a very nice animal. You're a very nice animal. Oh, I'm so proud. Your dad's going to be proud too. Very nice dog. All right. Uh, okay, let's go, let's go round up another puppy. All right, Charlie, come on. Let's do Charlie. Now, uh, I imagine Charlie's going to fetch just about as many times as we'll throw it. Oh, what a good dog, Mr. Charlie. Oh, what a good dog, Mr. Charlie. You're such a good dog. You're such a good dog. Now, guys, these are just fun fetches, just so that you guys can kind of get an idea of, uh, you know, kind of the difference in how the dogs like approach fetching, how much energy they put into it, how distracted they get. You know, sometimes when you're when you're watching professional trainers or high level amateur trainers, uh, you know, they don't take the time. And I'm, I've been guilty of this too, just to kind of show you, you know, like the raw element of the dog. You know, the dog's natural desire, their natural ability to deal with the environmental uh, conditions. Like right now, it's so hot and humid that it's really hard. I mean, only a dog with a tremendous amount of drive like Charlie are you going to be able to come out and, oh, in this kind of heat and really just get, you know, a, a lot of consistent fetching practice. But you'll notice Charlie runs, you know, just as hard the eighth or ninth time as uh, he did the first time. Which brings up a different problem, right? Uh, a lot of times, a lot of times if you only, you know, if you, if you have a regular job, uh, and you don't get a lot of time to train, you'll go out and even though it's real hot, you'll think, man, I've got to, you know, I've got to make up for what I didn't do last week. I've got to get that, all that volume of training that I should have got in in a week. I got to get that today. And if it's super hot, guys, like, listen, you can overheat a lab real quick. Uh, some labs especially are um, subject to what they call exercise-induced collapse, which is a specific disorder where, like, they're, they exercise, and they exercise themselves so, so hard, they just kind of lay over like they're having a heat stroke. But all of them that have a tremendous amount of drive will overexert themselves. So heat stroke or, uh, you know, heat-related heat stress is always something that you have to keep in mind. So if possible, you know, Keep your fetching to uh, you know a reasonable degree, and if you you know if you have access to some water, like uh, if we need to get some extra repetitions in with Charlie, what we'll do is we'll come over here and we'll get a few repetitions, and then we'll head over to the pool and let him calm down a little bit, Charlie, uh, and uh, or let him wet get, let him get wet and cool down a little bit, and then he'll calm down, and then we'll come back over here and go to fetch him. But I can pretty much just sit here and throw this dummy, and he will run and get it until he collapses. So it's on me to not let Charlie, uh, you know, put himself in danger. This is real hard. When you run a kennel, this is one of the things that you really gotta make sure that your staff understands. Uh, you know, that's why you can't, in the heat, can't take any chances as far as staffing goes. That's why I only have Eli and my son that works for me. Just not enough trustworthy people in the world. Come on, come on. Oh my gosh, very nice. Uh, okay, but you get the idea. Like, that right there is raw retrieving talent, you know? And the only thing that can stand in the way of Charlie being an excellent retriever is if I make some kind of mistake. You know, those other dogs that you've seen so far, uh, well, Ranger, he's gonna be an excellent retriever also. But the labs and stuff, you know, I was super happy to get a retrieve or two or three out of them at a short distance, you know. And if I'm a really good trainer and I really slowly draw out that talent, I can turn them into dogs that fetch some, right? But with Charlie, listen, I can't take credit for that. It's just like kids in basketball. Some are just born to play, and Charlie's born to play. Uh, all I can do is get in the way and mess it up. Okay, so we have Ruby, and we're gonna do some fun fetching or fun dummies with Ruby. Okay, girl. So Eli can back on up there because uh, Ruby is a lot like Charlie. She doesn't have, have quite as much drive as Charlie, but when you're just playing fetch with her, she'll usually play quite a bit. So throw it. Come on, Ruby. Oh my gosh, come on, come on. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Now Ruby has a tendency to want to uh, kind of hold on to it and tug a little bit too much. 
And so you'll notice when she comes back, come on Ruby, oh my gosh, come on. Uh, when she comes back, what I'll do is I will uh, do a trade up. So I'll take the dummy and then I'll trade her a nice uh, piece of dog crack for it. Oh my gosh, very good. You're a very good dog. Very nice. So she brings me the dummy and hands it to me. I give her a piece of dog crack and then I throw that dummy again. Now, if you'll notice, the sun just came out, right? And Ruby laid down just a minute ago when Charlie was out here. Ruby, come on. When Charlie was out here, there was some, a little bit of cloud cover. And uh, guys, that makes a big difference, you know. Like a, if there's a little bit of cloud cover, you're going to get quite a bit better uh, attention and you're going to get quite a bit better effort level. See how Ruby's going to the shade? Come on, Ruby. Oh my gosh, come on. So this is, this is the kind of stuff that happens. You can have a dog like Ruby who's got a pretty good amount of uh, retrieving drive, okay? But when that sun comes out, she goes, hey, listen, uh, I don't know how much, how much fun fetching is. Now, we'll work this out over the course of time, but you're gonna run into this quite a bit. So don't get frustrated, it just happens. Come on, Ruby. Oh my gosh, come on, come on. Very nice. Okay, now, so I know Ruby can fetch pretty well most of the time, and so I've already exceeded my three because I got to talking, um, but I'm going to throw it one more time, and I'm going to throw it real short so I can end my session on a, a good note, and I'm not going to throw it towards the shade. I'm going to throw it away from the shade. That way, the, the draw of that shade is not so, it's, it's, I'm in between the shade and the sun, so I'll throw it that way. And now... <laughs> Good. Now see, if I would have thrown it right along this shade line, then I would have had a lot more trouble dealing with the drawing power of the shade. But I'm not kidding you guys, when that cloud uh, cover went away and that sun started beaming down on me, uh, my face just immediately broke out in a hard sweat. You can see the sheen on my hand. And so like, it's easy to judge Ruby harshly because Charlie was just out here and he was fetching so well. but. Charlie didn't have to come out and deal with this direct uh, sunshine. Although he would have. I mean, he would have. He would come out here and run himself to death. But usually, Ruby's fetching is ah, fairly close to Charlie's, wouldn't you say, Eli? Oh, yeah. All right, now we'll go get my dog. All right, now we'll work with Mr. No Name, and he is uh, bred to fetch just like Charlie, and he loves to fetch. Oh my gosh! So we'll get him excited here. Uh, now, the one difference between uh, when Charlie was out here fetching and right now for Mr. No Name is this sun is out. But again, this is the kind of dog that you have to be careful with because he will flat out fetch until there just ain't no more fetching to be done. Oh my gosh. So if I just sit here and play fun dummies with him, I mean, he will just wear himself out, you know? So back up there a little bit, Eli. Oh my gosh. And so this is just, again, like a difference in drive, guys. Like I don't have to sit here and like worry too much uh, about like this dog not having enough desire to chase this bumper. You know, he's just gonna like chase it and bring it back and then he's gonna wanna chase it some more. <laughs> and this goes on and on and on. It would go on all day if I would let it. Like if it's cold outside or raining, like literally this dog will wear you out. Uh, and remember what I say guys, the dogs are good at the motion exercises. They're not good at the uh, being still part and the dogs are good at the being still part. They're not so good at the motion exercises. But on a rainy day, this dog walks around all day long with something in his mouth and he just goes from client to client to client trying to manipulate them into uh, throwing stuff for him. Okay, but you can see, look, that's just raw drive, just like Charlie. You see how Charlie and, and uh, this dog are just, uh, you know, I mean, they don't look exactly alike, but as far as how they behave and how they train, I mean, they're just very similar. So it just goes to show you how important it is, like, uh, to make sure that you pick a bloodline that is going to produce a dog that's in accordance with what your uh, short and long-term goals are. Oh my gosh, you're such a beautiful dog. Look, there we go. I mean, how many is that, Eli, 10, 12? Yeah, you know, who knows? Oh my gosh, very nice. All right, now we'll uh, go out. All right, so we're out back. I'm gonna do a little environmental socialization. I've got all these guys with me. Uh, let me show you who all I've got out here. Here dogs, here dogs. Come on, babies. Oh my gosh. We have River and Max and Blue and Ruby and Charlie and the mentor dog, Henry, and uh, Brittany uh, Tuck. So we'll get him a treat for hanging out. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take a walk. And uh, as we're walking, we're gonna expose these dogs to kind of a, you know, a wild outdoor environment. 
Now to get the dogs really fired up, see all this stuff here? Like this, you know, see how Henry, he's running off in here. Sometimes it can be a little bit daunting, you know, for a puppy to get off into some grass because from their perspective, okay, this grass is, uh, it's pretty tough to navigate, you know, and not to mention is the grass itself tough to navigate, but there's a lot of different, uh, you know, textures and sensations and stuff in here. There's a lot of sharp stuff, you know, and you can go back and watch my other videos where I talk a whole lot about, uh, you know, how when puppies are going out into this kind of a brushy area here that they have, that there's things to learn, you know, like one of the first things that they learn, have to learn here is how to deal with uh, briars. You see, and so when these puppies first come out here, they're always grabbing this with their mouth. <laughs> and uh, when they get these little pricks in their mouth, then uh, they learn, hey, I, you know, I don't want to fool with that. And the neat thing is, you know, like I'll come out here and I'll be looking for this, uh, you know, I'll be looking for it as I'm walking through the brush. Uh, the puppies can smell it. You know, they can be moving around in here and you can watch them. You know, they'll be moving, 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 and they'll smell where there's a, you know, a little bit of a briar patch. And they'll just make a, a beeline around it most of the time, keeps them from getting scratched up. And these are the kind of lessons that a puppy really needs to learn uh, early in life. Okay, so we'll keep walking. And uh, every so often, you know, I'll take a little dummy. And I'll just chuck it off over here into this brush, and I'll let Henry go get it. Uh, <laughs> now, so here they go, you know, and you'll notice who was the first one to go in there. Of course, Charlie, you know. Now, since it's 90-something degrees, we're going to keep that, uh, you know, fetching and jumping off into the brush to a minimum at first. Because <sighs> we're going to, we have a, you know, we have a fairly extensive path that we walk out here. And as we move through each section of the path, there's a lot of different, a lot of different stuff. So you see how there was kind of a little bit of a briar patch up there a second ago, right? Then we move down here and there's kind of vines, smells different. These different kind of weeds, you know, they grow like, uh, like kind of in fits and starts uh, around, the, around my back field here. Now what else will happen probably as we're moving through this brush, we'll cook, kick up a couple of rabbits or something. And uh, there's definitely, uh, you know, rabbit mess and deer mess and, and uh, you know, even coyote mess out here. Those are all things that the dog's gonna smell, you know? And uh, so it's just a big, it's just a, it's, a, it's just a big chance to get environmental uh, socialization. Back on up there a little ways, Eli, so you can see what these guys are doing. Now, while I'm walking, okay, I want them to explore and I want them to have a good time, but I don't want them to get too far away. So I kind of set a little, you know, a little uh, uh, perimeter in my mind. And when they start to reach that perimeter, I'll call them back to me. Here, dogs, here, dogs, come on. And so Henry will kind of lead the way. Now, as Henry comes, then these other guys will come. Very nice. And so that's what you use a mentor dog for, you know. The mentor dog shows the other dogs, you know, kind of how to conduct themselves uh, as we go through these different environments. Well, we're going kayaking a little early, later, and it's the same thing. Like if I, if I put uh, one of these young puppies in a boat just by themselves, even though we've been doing our yard work, even though we've been doing a lot of stuff, okay, then uh, like they'll get nervous. If I put them in the boat with Henry, they calm down a whole lot. And that's one of the keys to my success, guys, is that I have such a big group of mentor dogs that come here for boarding that uh, the young dogs are always seeing them, and they just take their uh, kind of emotional and behavioral cues from them. All right, so going back there a little ways, Eli, I'm going to show them about walking and calling the dogs. So one of the things that people have trouble with is getting dogs to like be trustworthy and reliable off the leash. Well, I'm pretty lucky because I have this series of paths out here, and I have Henry, but all we do is we start coming down through here, and then as the dogs move away, when they get a little too far, we call them back. Charlie, Ruby, come on. And we use each dog to kind of feed the other one. Ruby, come on. And don't expect them to be perfect at, at first, you know. Uh, you just kind of kind of keep at it. Uh, now, if there's any doubt in your mind as to whether or not you can like get to them, okay, well, just put a long line on them. It'll work out. Now, come back up here a little closer, Eli. One of the things too that you'll notice is that these on this path as we get around here like uh, there starts to be more shady spots and these dogs start to fall out on the shady spots okay and uh, so what we do is we, when we go back inside we kind of keep track of which dogs fall out at what stage of our paths you know 
that uh, by keeping track of you know the weather and and uh, you know how the dogs are doing in relation to our environmental socialization that lets us know what we can focus on next time some of the dogs like say charlie we can come out here and uh, we can walk around run around even ride the four-wheeler around uh, around my backfield over and over and over again and that calms Charlie down and that helps him be able to focus. It, it helps increase his attention span and his impulse control. So for Charlie, like doing these exercises, uh, these environmental socialization exercises, they actually help his obedience in the yard. Uh, now, some of these other dogs are a little younger. Some of them just, uh, you know, they're not built as kind of as, as springy. They're not built to have as much endurance. And so when we come out here, maybe we can only do a half a path, you know what I'm saying, or a quarter of a path. Or maybe we can let them go ahead and make all the pass that Charlie makes and my dog makes. But when we get back to the kennel, we have to give them a couple of hours rest time. Again, you're going to hear me say this over and over and over again. But, uh, you know, dog training is an art. It's uh, not really a science. The dogs are starting to get a little bit far away. I'm going to call them to me. Here, dogs. Here, dogs. Come on, boobies. Oh, my gosh. Very nice. Oh, very nice. You're a nice dog, and you're a nice dog. You're a nice dog, and you're a nice dog. Good. All right, so uh, I'm going to use this as a chance to toss my dummy again, get everybody's attention, and just kind of toss, not too far, you know, just kind of toss it right along the edge of the brush line here. Good boy, Henry. Good boy. And then I'll take, and I'm going to toss it a little bit farther. And you can see that they start to see Henry, you know, uh, go in there and they start to kind of thinking, I wonder what's in there. And if Henry can do it, I can do it. And that's a, that's a big thing with your dogs, guys. It's kind of just like children. You put children around mentors so that they'll look at the you know, older children and say, well, if little Bobby can do it, then I can do it. You know? And so that's all we're doing here is we're putting Henry into a position like where he can show the younger dogs that like, getting out in the brush, it's a lot of fun. You know? And I have to have Henry because Again, you see these briars, sometimes a young puppy will come out here and they'll get a little briar, you know, uh, on their face. Uh, sometimes they'll, they'll bite them, sometimes they'll eat these little blackberries, you know. And uh, as they're trying to get them, they'll kind of like uh, cut their tongue up a little bit or they'll get their ears a lot of times. Get, and then, you know, maybe they look at this and they go, well, whenever I see that or whenever I smell that, I want to stay away from that area. Well, you can't let a little bit of bad experience uh, you know, affect a dog's whole life. So when I have Henry, Henry jumps in there and those other dogs, they get so excited if they come in here and they get a little bit uh, uncomfortable because some of this brush or some of, this, uh, some of these particular kinds of weeds, well, what they'll do is they'll learn to like uh, do a better job of choosing their paths, okay? And they'll also learn that, you know, a little bit of pain, it ain't, it ain't gonna kill anybody, right? Okay, so we, we teach them to overcome, you know, physical and mental adversity. Right, and that's uh, that's something that's lacking a lot. Now, another thing that we do when we come out here, this time of year, and although we're looking to make sure that, you know, uh, Uncle Stony doesn't get in these briars too much. Man, look at that! Look at there, Eli. This is a real wild blackberries. Mmm, perfect. Show them what those dogs are doing. Now, remember how I always talking about, uh, you know, a good tired a tired dog is a good dog, or a tired puppy is a good puppy. Look at those guys laid out in the shade. Which well, just brings up a good point. Let's say you're gonna go do an, act, uh, an outdoor activity, you know. Maybe you're gonna go outside. Come all the way around this way, Eli, and see them. Uh, maybe you're gonna go outside and you're gonna go to a sporting event, uh, or you're gonna go camping, <sighs> gonna go to a music festival, whatever. You see how these dogs are all laying there <laughs> being good? Uh, what I should have done in this video is I should have just like had Eli poke, focus the camera on me and then I should have said, lay down, stay. <laughs> and I would look like a super trainer or something. Uh, but no, in reality, guys, when dogs get tired, uh, they just find shady spots and they lay down. So that's a little pro tip for you. You know, if you're going out somewhere this summer uh, to a big event, <laughs> you don't have to be an expert dog trainer. Just when you get there, take your dog for a big walk and then they'll lay down and, uh, you know, let you drink your beer. Okay, Eli, let's get back to walking. So we start heading back down this hill. Now, what I'm looking for here, when I take these young dogs out, when I bring these young dogs out, oh, you're a very nice dog, Blue. Oh, you're a very nice dog, dear. When you start at this age, 
guys, these dogs aren't super confident. So like even if they get a little bit tired, uh, if I just take off walking, they start to get a little anxious and they'll get up and they'll follow me. If you try this same drill with uh, pubescent dogs, right? You know, just think about like when you were a little kid, when you were three or four years old, you wanted to know where your mom was, right? <laughs> when you were 14 or 15 years old, you didn't want your mom to know where you were. <laughs> and the same thing happens with dogs, doesn't it, Eli? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes Eli, you know, he'll uh, be like, Stoney, Stoney, I've lost a dog. And I'll be like, it's all right. And we'll come out here, and it's just a pubescent dog, and he's laid up under a bush because he's tired, acting like he's deaf and can't hear Eli. So this is really the key right here. All right, Eli, now switch around behind me. Show y'all a different angle. The sun gives us trouble back here. Now, so <clears throat> we're gonna go from about 90 something degrees. And as soon as we start hitting this shady lane, okay, now it's gonna really be cool. And it's probably about uh, 70 something degrees. <clears throat> so one of the things that we do, we take advantage of the fact that, you know, uh, part of our property, uh, you know, we've mowed it in such a way as we can be in full sunshine if we want to, you know what I mean? Because like I said, the dogs need to learn to perform under high levels of physical and, and, and mental adversity. Uh, but they can only perform so well in a in hard summertime. So like we'll come out here and we can, we've mowed these lanes so that we can do our retrieving training or our, our environmental socialization in the shade when we need to, you know? And so look, all these guys are hanging out. And so we're going to do the same thing with Henry again. I'm going to toss that dummy up there. Very nice. Easy, dude. Easy. Very nice. I'm going to toss it up this hill. And you can see which dog is like really following Henry around the most. And uh, that's Charlie, uh, which surprisingly is followed by Max. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun, dun. All right. Oh, are you getting it, little Brittany? You want it? Listen, if you want it, you got to go get it. So I'm going to chuck this over here in these woods a little farther and let them really go over there and, and hunt for it. And see how they're kind of all just following the leader there? Ain't that neat? Very nice. In here. Easy. Good. Toss it down that way. Okay, don't fight over it. Charlie. Oh, and look at Charlie. Charlie is such a go-getter. He went in there and he beat, uh, <laughs> he beat Henry for the dummy. Oh, dang, Charlie. Oh, you're overachiever. Now see, so <clears throat> once Charlie, like right there, what he showed me is that he's capable of going in that brush and finding that dummy all on his own. And so I will switch him to the, uh, the, the advanced group. And so Charlie's not gonna come out with the puppies like this too much anymore. He's gonna come out with my dog and the other dogs that are here that are already had uh, quite a bit of environmental uh, socialization and uh, are good retrievers, or are on their way to being good retrievers. You might hear my neighbors over there on the tractor. Oh. Now, the other thing you run into out here all the time, this freaks my clients out, because people from the suburbs, uh, they're not used to uh, you know, having to deal with spider webs. I don't know if you can see it, but look at that spider. <laughs> you should hear, hey, listen, I wish I had a soundtrack of all the shrieks and screams <laughs> that we've heard over the years. We'll walk up here in the wood line. Come on, dogs, come on. And this is pretty fun for the dogs. Again, we're getting to shady spots. This ground is nice and cool and moist. I don't know if Eli's gonna be able to follow us, but maybe. We're just trying to give the dogs lots of different looks as it relates to, you know, uh, types of environments. And guys, you know, I'm always on and on and on about puppy-sized adventures. You know, there's a lot of you that right down the street, there's a culvert or something right off the road that's kind of grown up. To your dogs, that's like taking a safari to Africa. I always say that, and I'm not kidding you. Look, we're not very far from my house, right? Just a few acres back from my kennel, actually. 
but look it looks like we're in a like a whole big adventure land and for these dogs there's so much stimulation here there's look we just went from a, a field that's got all kinds of dry stuff and blackberries and blackberry uh, briars and all kinds of stuff now we're in here and it's nice cool mud to lay on uh, some walnut trees back here okay there's grape vines of course there's lots of old honeysuckle bushes and so like it doesn't seem like it but just 20 yards over that way is a completely different experience for the dogs let's go let's go back out that way Eli come on dogs so we're gonna wheeze our way down through here and come out on my path you know Now all the dogs are still with me, so I say, hey, I appreciate it, appreciate it, appreciate it. Charlie, you need a treat? Nope, Charlie doesn't need one. And then so Henry, of course, is past that stage where he needs any treats. Oh, well, we were going to show them how the environment changes so quickly, Eli. All right, so over there is super shady. And then we'll come through here. Oh, we're going to go around my big stick pile uh, where the coyotes have moved in. Now, by walking through here where the puppies have limited sight, right, I make the dogs like, you know, use their other senses. They have to think in terms of hearing me go, and uh, they have to think in terms of smelling where I'm going, because sometimes they get over here in front of me, last so the sun doesn't get you. Um, <clears throat> but so, like, sometimes I'll just take off running here, right, and I'll hide from the puppies on purpose. And when I hide from them, first thing they do is they put that nose on the ground. You know what I mean? And start going, wait a minute, I, where does Stoney go? I got to smell him out. And also we'll move back there. Hope Eli doesn't fall down too much. Now, as we start to get out of this shady spot, these puppies are having to figure out what to do. All right, Eli, get yourself situated. I'll wait here for you. We've backed Eli into a, <laughs> into a tough spot, so we've got to give him a chance to get settled. Tell me when you're good. All right, so here we go. Now, look, guys, I'm pretty short, and you can see how, you know, how tall these weeds are. But imagine a dog, they're only this tall. So what they're seeing down here is crazy, you know? Not just what they're seeing, but what they're smelling. Yeah, and they're right blue. Oh, what dog are you smelling? You're a very good dog. You're very good. So they're wallowing around out in here, you know? This is a big difference. Oh, then they come to our path. All right, so we walk up this way, and we walk out of the shade. Now, all of a sudden, it starts getting hotter again. Listen to everybody breathing hard, and they're nice and tired. That's our goal. Tired, well socialized, uh, working on physical and mental resiliency. Then we come up into this part of my field, and... Uh, now it's not shady so everything's different the way things smell the you know the the plants that live in this part of my field is different than over there in my little mini forest uh, the ground's a lot drier it's not as cool so we walk around out here and the dogs are like 20 yards that way is one environment 20 yards that way is another environment right here uh, it's a completely different experience. It's what I'm saying, guys. There are puppy-sized adventures just waiting for you everywhere. You just got to get out and get moving. We get up here. Now, what Eli and I have done up here in the middle of my field is we've mowed some retrieving paths. And what that does is it helps us uh, keep the dogs running in the direction we want them to run when we're working on fetching. So that's what we'll be moving into next. All right, so we come out of this shoulder level br uh, brush, grass and stuff, and then show them here, Eli. So what we've done here is we've mowed these paths. So now we're getting back to a nice, easy walking path. Dogs can have a little break. Then we come here. And then normally I'll stand down there and we'll work on retrieving. I kind of tell them to go that way, tell them to go that way, or walk back that way, Eli, and show them. You know? 
and that's about perfect, you know. Uh, so we've had a nice little adventure trip, done a lot, a lot of environmental socialization, and right here in just a small uh, radius, we've exposed the dogs to tons of different uh, animal smells, uh, tons of different vegetative smells, tons of different textures, tons of different temperatures, right? Uh, so these puppy-sized adventures, they're an integral part of what we do. Now most of these guys are pretty young, so they're pretty tired, and we're going to go up to the kennel, and then we're going to get our, uh, you know, our next dogs out, and we'll do some formal retriever drills, okay? So we do our yard work, we do our environmental socialization with our mentor dog, and uh, then we let these dogs go up and rest, and then we bring out mainly those American bred dogs, and uh, actually do retrieving drills, because they kind of have the physicality and the mental toughness to work a little bit harder uh, under, under this kind of uh, heat and, and uh, environmental pressure. All right, now we just came back through my gate and you can already tell what all these guys are wanting to do. Show them back up, Eli, and show them what's happening, right? So you can see Eli's over there in the sun and all these guys are posted up here <laughs> in the shade. Uh, so we'll walk up the small challenges course and uh, I'm about 90% sure uh, all these guys are just gonna go <laughs> uh, Charlie's probably going to jump in the pool and everybody else is going to go lay under the shade tree. <clears throat> but even when they're hot and tired, I'd like to get another repetition or two in of calling them. Look at Charlie turn like a champ. Good boy, Charlie. I say, hey, appreciate it. Appreciate it. Now, of course, that Brittany ain't going to come. And then <laughs> look at River. Go over and look at River, Eli. Look how he's looking at me. Are you coming or not, dude? <laughs> he's like uh i know where we're going so i'm just going to turn around and go on my own <laughs> uh that, guys again let's get back to talking about that difference between watch watch this between the american dogs and the english dog watch come on charlie good boy come on river <laughs> eli would you say that's par for the course that right there sums it all up, guys. If you didn't learn, like if you didn't watch any other part of the video, what you're seeing right here is the difference. All right, and so you see already uh, who's in the pool. Henry's in the pool, and uh, Charlie's in the pool. Oh, and who else wants to get in the pool? Oh my gosh, you're gonna get in that river? Oh, come around, come on, come on. You can do it. You can do it. Very nice. You've been calm, attentive, making good effort. Oh, very nice. Cool them off. It's what I was saying earlier about, like, if you're going to be working in the heat, it's super nice to have a pool. Everybody should have one if you're going to work Labradors in the summertime because you need to be able to... Come on, Blue. Come on, Blue. Because you need to be able to cool them down, you know. Oh, come on, man. Oh, very nice. Oh, come on, come around. Oh, now one thing here, look here. Eli, show them. When you go out in the woods, guys, you always have to like check your dogs as soon as you get back and check your children. Well, check yourself, check everybody. Because nowadays, you know, ticks, they're really bad because uh, it's just been raining so much, you know. And then plus those ticks carry Lyme disease, which is getting worse and worse. Look at everybody. Very nice. Oh. All right, Blue, you come on out of there. Oh. The river side. He can't decide. He, he wants to get in there and then he wants to get out. Oh, it's a lab pool party. Oh, come here, Jimmy. <laughs> oh, come on. Very nice. Come on, River. Come around here. Come on. Now, remember I told you how much these English bred dogs like food? <laughs> so, the, the desire to eat even outweighs their <laughs> fear of drowning most of the time. Very nice. All right. These other dogs are big dogs. They can get out on their own. All right. So uh, we'll figure out something else to do.